is 16 years old, coaching this soccer team. He got his SAT scores back. First goal, you guys. Congratulations. Hey, you loves me too. <laughs> Ryan has his first soccer game. I know he's very nervous and I'm excited for him. I think he's excited too. Then later on today, we're gonna play an online game with Brennan, which is so fun that we can play with him while he's in college. It's gonna be me and Brennan against Mike and Ryan and we cannot wait to get you for revenge. I am so proud of my son, Ryan. He is 16 years old and coaching an 8U soccer team with his friend, Ethan. Partially, well, probably mostly because we live in Florida and there's the opportunity to get a bright future scholarship is what it's called. You have to get certain community service hours. So he and Ethan are doing their community service hours by coaching this youth soccer team, which is like, he never even played soccer growing up. I mean, he played like pickup soccer, but he never played organized soccer, but he wanted to do it so badly because he loves kids and he's like, mom, I just really want to mentor kids and I think it'd be so much fun. And Ethan knows soccer, he played soccer, so together they make a great team. The first game is today and I'm on my way right now. Second proud mom moment. So Brennan or Ryan took the SATs for the first time um, maybe like three or four weeks ago and he got his scores this last week. I'm not going to share with you the number but when he told it to me I was like whoa <laughs> that's fantastic. He needs a, a 1210 so I guess I could share with you the number because he needs a 1210 on his SATs to reach the first level of Bright Futures, which is paying the, the scholarship pays for 75% of his college tuition, which is huge. Um, he needs a 1210 and on his first go out, he got an 1180. I am so proud of him and I think he's pretty proud of himself. So everything's coming together, you guys. Listen, I um, this is my third child, our third child, getting through this whole high school thing and um, you know, I being on the other side of it when they were still in high school, I had no idea how it was going to work out. I, I, I don't know. I, mean, I know my kids do well in school and I know maybe they, well, definitely the first two wanted to go to college. I never really heard Ryan talk about it, but and again, it's up to them whether they want to go to college or not. There's a lot of other opportunities that people can take that don't include <laughs> building up a massive amounts of debt and going to college, but living in Florida and having the bright futures for Ryan, it's fantastic for him that if he does decide to go to college, he's not going to build up massive debt if he goes to school in Florida because of the scholarship. So he's coaching the soccer team. He got his SAT scores back. I'm very proud of him. He is, um, has built great confidence now in um, and what his path might be in the future. So I'm going out to see his game and I am a very, very proud mom. First goal, you guys. Congratulations. <laughs> so fun. So Ryan and Ethan did a great job coaching the kids. Um, they did win two to one, um, regardless. They were so positive and high five. Switching people out. They, I mean, I don't really know much about coaching soccer, but I am a parent. They, they did a great job. I'm so proud of them and they love, love, loved it. They love the kids. Both Ethan and Ryan are really, really good with kids and the kids respond to them too, which is nice. They had to come up with a team name today too and they decided um, they were like, deciding on names and, and Ryan said, can I interest you in the Chargers? <laughs> which if you guys have watched our channel, you know that Ryan is a huge LA Chargers fan and uh, they, the kids didn't go for that. So they're the Jaguars, they're the Jaguars now, which is very exciting. So I'm anxious to, uh, I talked to, to Ryan and Ethan a little bit on the way out, but I'm anxious to talk to them, uh, spe specifically Ryan, a little later when he sort of can like let all of it sift. He's very excited, it's a big thing, a big day for him. So, sort of becoming adults, right? So, yeah. 
Brendan has been super excited to get us all online to play this game. It's Gen Smack. We played the tabletop version when we were in, with like physical cards, when we were in the Outer Banks a couple of years ago, but now they have an online version. So he's getting us all set up. On the television, the computer, we get to play with our phones. And I love the fact that we get to play with Brennan and Katie while they're in school. We could play with anybody if you can play on the online version. Katie can't play with us today because she has circus practice, but we're jumping online and playing with Brennan. So, and thanks to Jen Smack for sponsoring this video. We are so jazzed to be partnering with you. The best part is you guys can kind of play along with this because you'll get a chance to see the, some of the questions and some of the answers, but I highly encourage you to jump on and play. It is super, super fun. What's up everyone? It's Brennan, Jill, Mike, formerly known as mom and dad and Ryan. <laughs> we're all playing Jen Smack today from two different locations, a super easy setup, all you do, Start a video call, share your screen. Everyone joins the video call on their computer. And then there's a QR code or a link on the bottom left that you can click and it'll take you into the game. So let's get this game started. First team to answer a question from every generation and earns 15 points will be the winners. Good luck. All right, first to 15. All right. I'm in. What should we start with? It's our choice first. Oh, Brendan, let's do um, shows and films. What right. character says, I think I've been impaled after being stabbed by an icicle in the movie Frozen? Do you have the option to give me a hint or not? Uh, Olaf, boom. We tell the other team our final answer. Dad, Ryan. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good job, Brendan. High five. Um, virtual high fives. Hi, nope. Dad. Let's get it back. No worries, Brian. We got this. You're a boomer? Let's go shows and film. You're barely a boomer, Dad. You are right on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> what influential disco fueled 1977 film did Karen Lynn Gorney play Stephanie Mangano? Hey, Stephanie, you dancing tonight? Holiday fever, baby. <laughs> okay. Dude, uh, definitely right. Good job, Dad. Woo! All, all the, the little birdies on Jaybird Jay Street Bird Street. know the name of the biggest hit for Bobby Day in 1958. Name it All the Little Birdies on Jay but Rock and Robin. Like Rock and Robin, but that's Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, but Bobby Day sang it first. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Excellent. Bang. All right, guys, pick away. Let's Four try Millennial. Oh, I know this. Ryan, where, who's beats by who? Dr. Dre. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice work. Nice job, Brian. Which it's musical group counts Will I Am and Taboo among its members? Um, I want to say a tribe called Quest, but I don't think that's it. I want to use a hint. Is that okay, Ma? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I always thought they looked more like beans. You were there. Oh, uh, Green Eyed Peas. Black Eyed Peas. Black Eyed Peas. That's what I meant. Final Black Eyed Peas. Black Eyed Peas. Hi. Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Are we won? Did we win yet? We need one more. We need one more. Oh, one more. Okay. Okay, Gen X. How many really the first mobile phone in the United States in 1983? Motorola. Ah, uh, there you go. There. Boom. Nice. Good job, Michael. Hello, Moto. Easy, yeah, easy right for people and events. Greatest generation. Let's let's end this thing. What did Roger Bannister do on May 6th, 1954, that would forever cement his legacy? Who's Roger Bannister? I don't know. All right, let's do a hint there. Hint? You can always this is... hint if you run into any problems. Oh, he, uh... Maybe he won the New York City Marathon, or was there an Olympics in 1954? Uh, probably. How about won the 50-yard dash? 100-yard dash. 100-meter sprint? Won the 100-meter sprint. Okay. Done. Yep. Ooh, what do you do? Oh, you guys won! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> oh my gosh. You Good. guys won? That's crazy talk. Well, congratulations. It was, it was a close one. Oh my gosh. It was a Terrible. Close oh, yeah. Ryan and Dad went. That's uh, so that was cool. That was pretty nice awesome. work. All right, you guys, listen, we're going to play this again. We're going to have a grudge match because that way I am not happy with that. Brennan, you and I definitely were the better team here. 100%, 100%. I love yeah, the competition though. What? We didn't use one hand. Oh, that, that is true. Maybe that's why. Hey right, guys, that is so much fun. Do you guys remember, you guys remember playing the tabletop version when we were at the Outer Banks? 
totally fun but i like this even better it's so much easier and more fun and quicker and all that stuff so you guys you can get the tabletop version which is basically physical cards or you can play online anywhere with anyone totally fun you can play digitally right now on comcast tv or on the web app at app.gemsmack.com. All that stuff is going to be in the description box below. So if you want to get to it, and if you buy the classic game on Amazon, the classic one is the one with the cards, um, you get a 20% off. And the discount code is also in the description box. So you guys, thank you so much for playing. Promo code Donnelly20, capital D, 20% off. Thank you guys for playing, everyone. All right, Let's guys. See you again sometime. Congra yeah, definitely. Congratulations to you guys. Love you, B. Yes. So I went to pick up Ryan from Chess Club, and as it turns out, I was halfway up the street to get him, and he calls. He's like, oh, Mom, Ethan's bringing me home. Ethan went to Chess Club today. Turn around, which is totally fine because I was in the bug with my top down, and it's a beautiful day outside today in Florida. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you can see out there. But right before I went to pick up Ryan, I had let Eddie out on a leash right out here. This is what it looks like when I let him out. Right, this is our front door and I have this little leash and I have it attached to the gate, right? So I put him on this little guy and he generally goes over here. He might go to the bathroom and then he lays down right there. Well, I let him out for like 15 minutes and then I came back to get him and all that was left was the leash and his harness. And what he does sometimes, and this is what really gets me. Okay, so he'll get on the leash and he'll walk over here. Do, 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 do. I'm Eddie walking over. And here, let me do this wide angle so you guys can see. There we go. All right, so I'm Eddie. Do, 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 do. And I sniff around here and then I go around here. Okay, and then I go over here and then I can't go anymore because look, I'm stuck. I can't go anymore. So now since I can't go anymore and I really want to go, I'm in my harness, but I wiggle myself out of my harness and then I run away. And that's exactly what he did. And the worst thing about it is, is he got away. I didn't vlog this before because I, I don't know why, I guess we were vlogging that day, but he got away about, um, I guess it was last week. He was gone for 36 hours. <laughs> Eddie, like, so they had, had lost, I put something on next door. I'm like, hey, my cat's lost. This is what he looks like. And then the um, neighborhood people put stuff up on the mailboxes, like pictures of lost cat. Anyway, he was gone. He never actually came home. I got a phone call from a neighbor that was like, hey, I think I have your cat. Like, oh my gosh. Thank you, thank you. So I was nervous about alligators, uh, but I'm more nervous, not so much about alligators for the kitty. I'm more nervous about hawks because they come down and they like see these little animals and they just pick them up. So, but he's pretty good at hiding and he, I'm pretty sure he can beat an alligator because, because before we moved down here, I Googled that to see if an alligator, if a cat would beat an alligator. And I think a cat would beat an alligator. At least all the videos that I saw, the cat was beating the alligator because the alligator is like scared of the cat and the cat can run faster. So that, I'm not so much concerned about that as I am concerned about him uh, <clears throat> bothering neighbors because you're really not allowed to have animals without leashes in my neighborhood. So, anywho, that's what's going on right now. Three hours later. Look who's here, my buddy came back. Hi, handsome. You came back. I'm so happy. I'm so, are you just gonna look at, not even look at me? Hi, uh, do you wanna eat? Oh, you guys, I'm so happy he's back. Oh, buddy. Yay, that was only a few hours. Okay, I'm gonna get you some really good food, okay, love? Look, he doesn't even have his harness on. Like, he wiggled out of his little harness. But he's like, oh, I'm hot. Let me, oh. <laughs> Look at the attitude. Look at it. Oh, my gosh. I love getting so close to a little guy. So, you guys, check out the video when <laughs> he loves me, too. <laughs> Check out the video when we got Edward and Alice and Mike had no idea we were bringing two cats home. He was not happy, but Ryan and I did it anyway. See you guys.